Hi guys, in this video I will be visualizing concurrency versus parallelism, something that I wanted to do for quite a while. Um, so there is usually confusion, especially when you're starting into um, looking into this multi-threaded applications, um, confusion between concurrency and parallel computing. So this is what I'll try to <coughs> visualize today. Right, so um, we'll begin very quickly by creating a package and adding some boilerplate code as per usual. Uh, now let's just do this. So yeah, the scope of this tutorial is not to discuss the details of these two um, computational models, but simply give a visualization of them. In fact, the code that I'll be using in this tutorial or in this video is not parallel or multi-threaded or concurrent. It's all going to be executed sequentially, but the visualization will be um, representative of what the actual thing happens when, when it comes to concurrency versus parallelism. And for those familiar with the Java um, concurrency architecture, then you'll know that everything UI related is computed on the JavaFX application thread, which is what I'm using. And I think we'll need some things to draw on. So let's call it drop canvas. So I'm going to use um, four canvases and I will draw onto them and we'll try to see how the concurrency drawing differs from parallel drawing. And before doing that, to just give you some idea of what should happen is, I'll give you a textual version of it first. Let's start with sequential because this is, if you haven't done any multi-threaded programming, then so far you've been doing sequential programming, which is basically given two jobs, J1 and J2, you complete job one. Uh, suppose job one or jobs in this scenario take six segments to execute. One, two, three, four, five, six. So job one is now complete. I can now move on to job two. One, two, three, four, five, six. So sequentially, this is what it looks like. You complete one job, you then only then move to a different job. Now in concurrency, um, there are various definitions of concurrency. Um, the one I quite like is the overlap of jobs. So that you can start and work on two jobs um, at the same time with overlapping periods. But the, at any given real time, there's only one job being executed. And this is clearer if I draw something like this. Uh, we've said six segments, so job one, two, 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 this gives us six segments and the same thing happens with job two. So job one is paused at this moment and then the CPU starts working on job two. So from the perspective of the user, those both of those jobs are executed almost at the same time. Although now you know the difference, they're not actually being executed at the same time. You can see that at any moment in time, there's only one job being executed. The CPU simply alternates between them and however many jobs you have. And then we have this thing called parallelism, which is well, possibly simpler to describe because it literally executes two things at the same time or two or more things if you have more than two. Um, that requires actual physical hardware. So you need to have more than two, um, more than one core, physical core to execute two things at the same time. 
Um, yeah, there's also a hyper-threading thing that I'm not going to talk about. So both sequential and concurrency computational models can be done on a single core CPU. Parallelism requires at least two cores. Right, so now that this is slightly more helpful, I think we can now move on to actually drawing stuff. We're going to have four of those things, so let's do that. Um, state positions. We'll need the graphics context. Um, let's go with this. That'll do for now. And um, we got children add all new job canvas at zero zero. That's 400, 0, that's 0, 300, and that's 400, 300. So this subdivides our root, um, our window into four pieces, four spaces. So although you can't actually see it at the moment, you have, we have four um, subspaces of the window in which we'll try to visualize concurrency versus parallelism. I need an animation timer. Before I forget, timer start. I always keep forgetting that. That's the call. Uh, let's do concurrent. So we'll do concurrency for the two subspaces um, at the top, and we'll do parallel computing for the two subspaces at the bottom. This is going to run concurrently. This is going to run in parallel. I need to have access to those jobs though. Jobs, nope. In um, parallel, well, that's pretty simple. We do something. I don't want to draw it here. Let's create a method in there called um, make progress. There we go. Makes sense. Drops can make progress. If we are done, then return. else draw um how do we draw fill rectangle we need x and y coordinates let's put them up current x current y um Pixels pixels per progress. Let's make it four to make it faster. Current X increases if current X is greater than or equal to um, 400, which means we are out of bounds, then we need to reset x and we'll increase y. It's actually pixels per progress. And then if y exceeds that, um, then we're done. That's 300.
So in which case we can do make progress and do that. So two and three are at the bottom, these two. Um, at the top we have zero and one. These are indices that I'm talking about. For concurrency, I need to alternate between them. So I need to keep track of the job index that I'm currently working on. And I can do jobs get job index make progress. Job index increases. If job index reaches two, then we swap. We go back. Is that it? Let's try this. So the two at the top are concurrently executed and the two at the bottom are executed in parallel. And well, we're almost getting twice the speed and that's the theoretical, I think, um, performance boost that you can get. Probably even slower than that. Um, well, the concept is that these at the bottom executed at the same time and the ones at the top they alternate so you execute drop one then you switch to drop two and to drop one this is what we've said here so this actually should map to these two things quite nicely and that is essentially the visualization of concurrency versus parallel computing. Now, if you wanted to have another visualization, which would be sequential, which basically finish one rectangle and only then move on to a different rectangle, different subspace of the window. Hopefully this is now clearer with respect to which is which and the differences between in the execution. There are very um, there are a lot of tiny details that I've omitted. For example, in concurrency, you can actually get better speed um, or finish quicker than in sequential. Currently, I have them as things that cannot be split, so atomic jobs um, that simply require to have six um, segments to execute. You could um, have a scenario where there is an IO operation involved of some sort, whether networking or reading from a file or a database. And if that takes a long time, what you could do um, in the concurrency model is to make that thread wait and do some other work or make the job kind of pause while it's waiting for the um, IO operation to complete and then do something else and then come back when the IO IO operation finishes. That way you're actually going to finish the two jobs quicker than in the sequential model. But like I said, we're just looking at the visualizations of the two um, latter models of computing. And hopefully this has been now demystified for you. Thanks for watching.